comes without warning, and it cannot be escaped. Though teachings on death and dying are no longer common in the West, they remain a part of daily life in the Buddhist cultures of the Himalayas. The kingdom of Ladakh, once considered Western Tibet, is now administered by the Indian government. It is located 3,700 meters above sea level, on the borders of China and Pakistan. Because it lies in a politically sensitive area. Foreigners were forbidden to visit there until 1974. As a result, the culture of Ladakh is still relatively unchanged. Every New Year's, the people of Leh, the principal city of Ladakh, make a pilgrimage in which they offer prostrations, an ancient Buddhist practice. By making prostrations to the Buddha, his teachings, and the community of his followers, they pray that all who suffer in this world may find refuge in abiding peace. According to the Buddhist teachings, Buddhahood or unchanging wakefulness is at the heart of every living being. This basic awareness is the essence of life. It is beyond birth and death. But to be born leads inevitably to the sufferings of sickness, old age, and death. Compassion for everything that lives is the basis of a path through this life and to our death. The belief in reincarnation is an expression of that compassion. <laughs> Buddhism was brought to Tibet in the Himalayas 1,300 years ago by the great Indian saint Padmasambhava. It was he who wrote the Tibetan Book of the Dead. The Tibetan Book of the Dead is a guide for the dying. It describes the process of dying as a natural transition. The text explains how, by recognizing the mental states and physical sufferings involved, we can come into contact with our own essential nature. In this way. It is possible to find freedom from confusion and fear. In a small village near the headwaters of the Indus River, an old man, Paulton Sering, has died. The women of the family have gathered in the kitchen where they improvise laments to his memory. Whenever he would smile at me. I was never so happy. Now that he's gone, I have never been so miserable. <laughs> The family has requested Chozan, a Nakpa or Buddhist yogi, and a resident of the village who often performs these rites. To come and read the text and to make the appropriate offerings. When someone dies, the Bardo Total, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, is read every day for 49 days. According to this text, the consciousness of the dead person lingers between one life and another for a period of 49 days. During that time, he is capable of hearing, so the text is read aloud. Encourage and guide him. At first, the text is read in the presence of the body. Kept carefully wrapped, this text, like most traditional Tibetan books, consists of unbound pages held between two boards, and has been printed from hand-carved wood blocks.
O son of noble family, that which is called death has now arrived. Now, for the benefit of all beings, recognize the luminosity which dawns before you. This great blazing mass of light is enlightenment itself. It is the natural mind. It is the essence of your own mind. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. The Book of the Dead describes how at death the consciousness is suddenly separated from all the circumstances which made up daily life. Mind experiences its own liberation directly as radiant, pure, white light. Both life and death, according to the Bardo Toto, are a continuous flow of uncertain transitions called bardos. In the bardos of death, if mind does not recognize its own nature, it becomes ever more solid until it enters a new form of life. O oh, son of noble family, now is the time for you to seek a path. You are not alone in leaving this world. Everyone who has come before you has died. You can no longer stay here. Now you should think like this. Now I will abandon clinging to this body and to this world. I will go forward. I will abandon fear and terror. And I will recognize whatever appears as a projection of my own mind. Chozan uses an old astrological calendar to fix the day of Paul Dunsering's cremation. Making calculations based on the dates of the dead man's birth and death, he determines that the cremation should take place ten days later. It shows here that Paul Dunsering may have been a wild pig in his past life and that he may be a bird in his next one. But perhaps if he takes the Bardo total to heart, he will return to the human realm. At the beginning of this century, W. Y. Evans Wentz, an American who studied anthropology at Oxford, became interested in reincarnation. He traveled to India where he found a copy of the Bardo total and sponsored the translation from Tibetan and edited the text into English. It was he who titled it The Tibetan Book of the Dead. The renowned Swiss psychologist Carl Jung wrote that he had found in this book his life's partner who had revealed the secrets of the soul. The Living Dying Project in San Francisco has been assisting terminally ill patients for more than 20 years. The project's aim is to help dying people find meaning in the transition between life and death. The project was created because the metaphors, the storyline that existed in, in our culture for dying, in which death was seen as a failure and the enemy and an error of the universe, and therefore, the hospital intensive care ward was the ultimate inner chamber of the temple about life. And the whole fear that surrounded the process of doctors seeing death as a failure, for example, we felt there was the need for another metaphorical system. So please begin by picturing in front of you your client or some other person you know who is suffering right now. And 
feel in an open and direct way how this person actually is suffering. Feel the, the quality of it. The Dying Project was created in order to create an environment in which people that were deep in philosophical materialism could explore another metaphor for life and thus for death. And the people we found most willing to do that were people that were themselves facing death. Okay. What do you think is going to happen when you die? This hospice serves well, people who are expected to die within six months. Most people don't talk about death, you know. And, um, Would you like to talk about it a little bit? Yeah. You want to tell me what you know? <laughs> well, you know, I would, and I obviously uh, haven't died myself lately. No. <laughs> but let me give you what I know, and maybe it'll be useful. Consciousness leaves the body, and consciousness experiences a feeling of integrity and wholeness and safeness, and then it's attracted toward what is universally described as a very beautiful, incredibly beautiful, clear, bright light. It's never described as a beautiful sound or beautiful smell, but this very beautiful light. The reason this light is so beautiful is that this light is your true nature. Oh, that would be very nice. Uh, that's fascinating. So you've actually been there with people and they've come back and told you from near-death experiences, and there are people in certain traditions, like for instance in Tibetan Buddhism, who are trained to go into that after-death state with people and guide them. There are actual guidebooks to help people uh, go through this, this journey, if you will. Tokudun Rinpoche is an abbot from the monastery at Ladakh. He is making this visit in order to bless the people of the village, to teach, and to see how they are faring. Tokudan Rinpoche is also giving teachings on POA. This is a method unique to the Tibetan Buddhist tradition for assisting the consciousness to release its attachment to the physical body at the time of death. This is Stanjin. He is 96 years old and has lived according to the Buddhist path for all his adult life. He has a deep interest in these teachings. First, visualize the form of the Buddha of boundless light, Amadeus, above your head. Let your consciousness rise upward through your abdomen, upward through your body, up through your neck, and finally, out the top of your head. Dissolve there into the light around you. In this way, you may enter directly the pure realm of light. The uncertainties of the bardo will not affect you. While in the village, Tokadin Rinpoche also goes to do the poa ceremony for Paul Dinsering. He makes offerings of barley and butter and anoints Paul Dinsering's head.
Golden Sering, you have died. The light of this world is fading completely. And the light of the next world has not yet appeared. Your body has lost all feeling. This is what death is. Let yourself go. With more offerings of barley and butter, he invokes the blessings of all the Buddhas and all the awakened ones. Blood on the head gives an indication that the ceremony has gone well. If there is some sign that the dead man's consciousness has left the body from a place on the head, then that's a good thing. It means that the consciousness has not been obstructed as it left the body completely. Offerings are left out to encourage Paulton Tsering. Be nourished by our offerings, Paulton Tsering. Every day, Stanjin offers 100 prostrations with these words. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. By praying in this way, Stanjin invokes the wisdom of the Buddha, his teachings, and the community of his followers to help all beings find liberation from suffering. He feels he has accomplished all that he can in this lifetime. He has lived to see his family secure and well, and his last wish now is to die soon.
Are you afraid of death? No, everyone must die someday. Everyone is born with the weight of death on their shoulders. I haven't done anything bad, so I'm not afraid to die. What happens after death? Above are human beings, below is hell. It's our destiny to die. Why aren't you afraid? Because we'll be reborn. This child is the reincarnation of someone. Everyone is reincarnated. What was this child's previous life? That I don't know. Even though the physical body dies, consciousness continues. It is a constant repetition of life and death. That's why people are reborn. Stanjin was born at the end of the last century. It was all he could do just to survive the harsh winters. As a child, he had no blanket, so he slept covered in loose chicken feathers. For food, he caught wild birds and animals in the mountain. The only money in his village came from the sale of handicrafts to the caravans which traveled to China. Some of my life was very hard, but I have always practiced the Buddha's teachings. When I say the mantra with this prayer wheel, it is to express my wish that all beings in the lower realms, the animals and hungry ghosts, beings in hell, all find liberation. No matter what happens now, for myself, I have no regrets. One of the things they wanted me to do today, and let me ask you if this is something that seems appropriate to you, was to read a little bit of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, oh, okay. which uh, traditionally is read to people so they can become familiar with these ideas. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I'll need okay. one day. <laughs> Listen to what I am saying, Bruce. Death is now come and you are departing from this world. But you are not the only one, as death comes to all people on earth. Be willing to release any connections with the life you have been living, and release the people with whom you have associated. Whatever fear or terror that might come to you during the experiencing of the reality of your mind, keep these thoughts in your consciousness and go forward. Recognize that any mental image, pictures which occur, are of your own creation. Maintain that recognition and you will achieve liberation. Nine days have passed since Paul Dinsering's death. According to the Bardo total, if the deceased has still failed to recognize his own basic nature, and if he has failed to recognize the peaceful deities as projections of his own mind, then they transform into terrifying, wrathful ones. Paulden Sering listen without distraction. Now, the blood-drinking, wrathful ones will appear. Their bodies are dark red or dark blue with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. Their nine eyes gaze into yours with a furious expression. 
They hold human skulls full of blood, and they roar like thunder. They are accompanied by a retinue of their own kind in many colors, and they fill the whole of space. Do not be afraid. Do not be confused. Recognize them as the projections of your own mind. Do not be afraid, for they are your innate wakefulness. If you recognize this, you will be liberated. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. Today is the day of Paul and Sering's cremation. Monks have been chanting in the house with the body since early morning. Cremations in Ladakh are performed as fire offerings. In order that he may no longer cling to his former body, and so that his relatives and loved ones may release him from the bonds of their attachment to him, his body is offered to the fire. The substances that are offered with the body, butter oil, sugar, and various grains, represent everything that is desirable, sustaining, and virtuous in this world. To complete this process, Paul and Sering's possessions were donated to the monastery. The day after the cremation, the monks auctioned them off to the people of the village. <laughs> <laughs> 
two days later, Paulden Sering's sons carry his ashes up the mountain and leave them to the elements. Sering, listen without distraction. The body which you had in this life is becoming indistinct to you, and the body you will have in your future life is becoming clear. As you sense this, you will become frightened and sad. There is no place for you to rest, and no stopping place in your ceaseless wandering. You do not care what your next life will bring as long as you will be born soon, and so you approach anything that appears before you. Take care, Paulden Sering. Do not be afraid. Look for a good human birth, where you may yet recognize your own true nature. <laughs> The 14th Dalai Lama now resides here in Dharamsala, India. He was born in 1935 and was recognized five years later as the incarnation of the previous Dalai Lama. As a young boy, he could recognize people who were familiar to his predecessor and select objects which he had used. After his formal recognition, he was rigorously trained and assumed full spiritual and temporal authority as leader of the Tibetan state in 1950, at the age of 15. If you accept, if you believe, if you accept, you see, life, continuation of life, then death is just you see, one occasion. Like, you see, they're changing your, your when your clothes become, I said, old, and then... You see, the, the old cloth, you see, uh, uh, throw away and take, you see, new, nice, nice, you see, cloth. Similarly, see, this old body uh, uh, cannot function properly, then change the new body. More energetic, more, more fresh body. <laughs> So Krapa was shot by an Indian policeman 11 years ago while participating in a demonstration for the improvement of labor conditions in the DAC. 2,000 people from all over the country attended his funeral. Subsequently, the Indian government acceded to the demand for improved conditions and so Krapa became a national hero. We have confirmed that this boy is the reincarnation of the monk Sokrapa. All the Dak is very happy. Sokrapa's incarnation, Zopa, is the youngest son of a poor farming family and was discovered in Sokrapa's own village. When he was born, he had a bruise on his side, which did not go away for a very long time. He said that he had been hit by a bullet and it hurt him. The bruise was on the same place where Sokrapa was shot. When Zopa was two years old, he said he wanted to meet his aunt. But the aunt he was referring to was Sokrapa's aunt, who had raised Sokrapa as a child and had lived with him. When he visited her, Zopa was able to identify all the objects which Sokrapa had regularly used. Then, 
My nephew, Socrato, was a pure-hearted, virtuous person who always thought about other people. Because he was a good man. He has found a good rebirth. When Zopa was eight years old, the village gathered funds to send him to be trained at Sera Monastery in Mysore, India. monastery in Tibet gives special attention to the traditions of debate, logic, and chanting Buddhist texts. The people of Ladakh hope that Sopo will one day return to his country as a future leader. On the final day of reading the Bardo Total, the entire family gathers to pray that Paulden Sering will find a fortunate birth. Paulden Sering, listen without distraction. You have not recognized your own nature, and now you will once again experience all the painful uncertainties of birth and death. Give up anger, give up attachment, and give up yearning for relatives and friends. Take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. With your head held high, enter the human realm. I am very happy that we have been able to offer all these prayers and this reading to help my father. We have done all that can be done for Paul and Sarang. And all the ceremonies and readings have been done properly. I feel that Paul and Sarang has found a human birth. But I don't know in what circumstances he may have been born. The Tibetan Book of the Dead presents the states of dying and after death as a continuous possibility. We can become frozen in our attachment and fear, or we can recognize the liberation of our true nature. The Tibetan Book of the Dead shows that this opportunity is available to us in every moment of life and death. The heavy body of flesh and blood and bones has within it this body of consciousness, this body of light. Becoming this body of light so that you can just dissolve into this sense of light. The solid body remains here but you are becoming this pure light, dissolving into your heart, dissolving into your heart with each breath. Each time you breathe out, it's as if it were your last breath. expanding into a larger and larger sense of spaciousness. 
nothing to hold on to beyond the mind, beyond the body, floating free in space, totally safe, any distraction dissolving back into the heart, floating free. Nice. You know any tapes of you talking like this to I don't have any tapes. Oh, no. I'd love to play a few times. So. Something which difficult to handle. Uh, now that, if you prepare that, you know it. Now, the, such such is a time. I will be, I will face the terrible situation. And knowing it, knowing it, and prepare for it. Then when actually, you see, that happened, ah, you already, you see, accept it. You already, you see, prepare for it. So much easier to handle. And I accept that, actually. And I, it's not like it's an awful thing, you see. And if you can get to that point, you face, you face death a lot. Because it's just another thing along the way. Sometimes I also, you see, have some kind of excited feeling towards death. Now, because, you see, in my daily prayer, they deal with, you see, the death process and the part of process and next life. So, therefore, the, when I think, sometimes think about death, then I got some kind of excitement. The weather Really, I can utilize these practice fully at that moment or no. Stanjan's great-granddaughter, who is married into a family in a distant village, comes to visit him. Grandpa, how are you? Here's my son. No, 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 The child is Stanchion's great, great grandchild. Stanjin is very happy to have his family with him. You are put it down, so good. So put it down. But you, Julie, Julie, Nana Julie. Although he wants nothing further from his life, as he says, I am always grateful for what the path of life gives to me.
Today, Buddhism no longer exists in many of the countries where once it flourished. Nonetheless, in those countries where it is still practiced, it is a source of guidance and strength. And it continues to express people's aspirations for the well-being of all.